to another episode of Design Divas. I'm Pavitra and this is Sheila from Shilpa Architects and we are here to talk today about the very interesting topic of water in architecture, how it can be resilient, it can be beautiful, how it can be practical and useful and necessary and bring all our architectural work alive. So let's get to it. <laughs> What was that trigger challenge that you had in an architectural project that caused you to start being so much more sensitive and caused that kind of, you know, heightening of sensitivity towards water? I think uh, in the early 1990s, when uh, we were uh, asked to design in a two and a half acre site, and it was housing, it was about 104 houses, I recall, that the site on abutting the road was almost five meters higher than the rear of the site. So then, you know, it occurred to me that, you know, how to tackle, I mean, tackling this as a design along as a given in the design was something which was very important to me because I realized that if water comes on the road, it is going to flow backwards towards the site. Right. So the site is going to drain it and there was a nulla at the back. So obviously it, that would be the direction of the flow. So, you know, I thought about it a lot and thought about it a lot, had a lot of discussions with the clients and then uh, I finally convinced them that they had to design with the lay of the land. So when uh, I am glad that we took that decision because when the floods came in, uh, you know, this particular site did not have any water. It let the water flow, flow through, through it, it. Yep. whereas the next, the neighboring property was completely flooded. Right. I was really happy that, you know, we had taken the decision. You worked with the natural flow of yes. the site rather so than against it. So that was when I realized that, you know, it is so important to understand understand the elements of nature and how they are acting on a on a piece of land or a, or a site. It, it's very interesting that you said that you know the first challenge was to deal with water in its natural element because I guess architecturally always water has been used for its beautiful aesthetic yeah. for the fact that it kind of it embodies a certain serenity or a tranquility about it. So what is it that you think um, is that balance between the aesthetic use of water and the functional and the programmatic use of it in the design? Yeah, so you know when you when you try to think of water as an element, it's uh, it's an element which can be you know there could be a gurgling water, right? There could be a falling water, right? I know the, falling water, the most famous yes, uh, of it's the such examples. A, such a beautiful example of yeah. how water has been treated within a design yeah and so you can talk about it as as uh, something which is streaming and you know very calm and moving around so the dynamism of water the uh, you know it could be placid water it could be just pools which kind of you know especially in space spaces like uh, in chennai mm. it can you know the evaporative cooling can give you a, not only real time comfort in terms of cooling, but also a feeling of being cool. A perception of comfort. So, yeah. so how pools, lily ponds, etc., give you that kind of an aura. Right. So, so I think water can be used beautifully by designers, and this is something that you need to decide how to use in different scenarios. Right. But what about the other aspect of it? You know, the the programmatic aspect of it, which is where you start talking about how it can almost be a threat, like it was a threat in that first project that you just described. Right. Uh, and how do we sort of like put in check measures to overcome that? Like what are the good practices that we can put in on day one that help us get there? So I have found that water could be a threat, whether the project is small in scale or whether it's large in scale. So for example, even in a house right. that I think we recently did at Manapakam, right. we had the water, we had the Adya River, and we knew that the water from the higher ground level is going to flow through our site right. and, and go to the river. So we had to kind of tackle that in the design. So the design was done in such a way that this could seamlessly happen during the floods and not deter 
you know, the, the functionality of the house. So similarly, in larger projects, for example, right now, this, this uh, project that we are doing for mass housing, the 21 stories and, uh, you know, so many towers and the entire site is getting split by a nala, which is going from uh, east to west. Right. And, you know, the waters that are coming from the higher area are willy-nilly going to pass through our site. So how do you how do you even control this? We don't even know how much water will come, right? Because it depends on the number amount of rain, and then it depends on the gradients. It depends on the developments that have happened, it, not only now, which are going to happen in the future, right? So all this is going to kind of uh, uh, gives you a lot of imponderables to design with. But what we can do as designers is to reckon that this is a problem. And this has to be dealt with. You can't wish it away and fill up that piece of land and build over it. Right. So how do you how do you integrate it in the design? How do you create that space for the water to, you know, flow through your piece of land and and you know still make it aesthetic, a part of landscape? And how do you use it as an advantage? and as a USP for the entire project. So we just talked about water within the building as well as, you know, perhaps surrounding the building or flowing through a site and its passage. But what innovative ways have you found in your experience that you've used water in interior spaces? See, you know, I think when, when we use sloped roofs, mm -hmm. you know, you have the water falling on the sides, on the eaves. And then we collect them. And we have the option to either, you know, make it fall as a curtain along the walls. Or you have the option to bring it out to in one direction, in right. one place, and then drop it down. So, you know, the use of rain chains in this has fascinated me. And this is a... Is I, a, is it's, a, a it's a lovely tropical detail. I it's think a lovely it's very... Detail. Yeah. So you have, in your planning, you identify areas in which, you know, the rain chain starts working. The rain chain it brings down that much of water. So when it brings down that much of water, there is an element that you create on the floor, on the foreground. And that could be a pond, it could be, it could be linked to the other areas. Right, right, and, you know, that itself can form a lovely theme for the entire uh, architecture, meandering in and out of the house. Right. So, and I also really like the, the usage, I think, of the, the courtyard. Yes. I mean, it's a very beautiful kind of a right. traditional element that we've seen in our designs. And in some of our joint projects, where we've kind of reinvented the courtyard, where it actually has like a swimming pool or it has like another water element, but it also works really beautifully with these rain chains and bringing down water very elegantly when there is that much rain water or storm water that's run off. So it's kind of like that perfect balance between using water as an aesthetic element as well as how you deal with it on a functional basis, right? Especially, so, Pavitra, when you design in the hills. Right. And you have to use slopes to bring down the water during the rainy season. So, you know, it, it is so beautiful and so challenging because you work with wa water as an element of the design. So it, it can, there are umpteen possibilities and, you know, you could really, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a designer's delight. So with the coming in of sustainability as an aspect, right, I think um, the entire sustainability chapter on water efficiency is centered around, yeah. uh, you know, coefficient runoff rates, uh, flow rates of water. How do you make fixtures more efficient? How do you use less water to do the things that water functionally needs to do in a house, which is mostly in the bathroom and the bathing areas? And sort of like really taking that, uh, the, the focus on landscape, how much water is used for landscape, what kind of landscape gets used and things like that. What have you thought about sustainability practices and how have we, manage to integrate sustainability and water balance as part of the design process. As you're saying it, Pavitra, I think now today it has become very apparent that there is a dearth of water. 
right that of good water that right, can be right. drink drunk and use usable water right so we need to conserve water and that is a given yeah so now what we need to do is there are different ways in which we can conserve this water one is of course lowering down the consumption as you said by using low flow fixtures by you know flushing less by recycling your uh, water one the right, grey water, water and to reuse it, for it again flushing and you know there are so many ways in which the consumption can be cut down so this is something that can be done by collecting rain water and then using that to cut down your consumption that is also a way in which you can cut down your consumption but you know the what is more mm. important is how do you handle the water that's falling on your terraces and i think with the climate change situation i right. mean chennai has had rains the whole month of june which has just been unheard of yes. and we have these flash storms that we're not equipped to capture this water that is actually coming to us yeah this becomes so important because what is happening is we all know that there are aquifers running below the ground and they are at different levels and especially chennai has got so many aquifers the higher aquifers the lower aquifers and they say chennai is sinking and chennai is sinking obviously because these higher aquifers which are closer to the ground have collapsed so how do you recharge these aquifers right so how do you so water recharging into the soil becomes so important absolutely and so for that what are the materials that you can use which is you know which is allows this to happen well and efficiently right so and uh, you know we have clay soil so then you know you have water stagnation water recharge problems yeah so mm -hmm. you have to it's a constant striking of the balance between you know uh, getting water to go into your uh, into your soil into the place uh, on which you are while at the same time seeing that water does not come into the place that into you the are. house of the dwelling yeah, yes yeah. then that can happen you know when the storm waters overflow on the road so you you you're opening a pandora's box right so right, you know you it is something that you're opening out to a problem and it seems and beyond your control it, it like some of it is beyond your control it is because you can't collect all the road water and try to recharge your ground right it's not feasible and while the ground is completely soaked up with water and the water table is so high so how do you still recharge so these are the problems that come and you know you need to look of in look at innovative ways in which you can store water on the roof whether you can store water above ground as over ground i mean you know not underground but some over ground tanks. over ground tanks and how do you you know make that possible to store the water right. only for that you know 2 3 days correct and correct. then afterwards reuse it you know beautifully in a manner in a manner which, which is yeah right yeah, so no, but there are important. much more engineering solutions i think that are in yes. this space right now that are helping us with this i mean i think that we've come a long way in terms Absolutely. of just uh, you know learning also what it takes to sort of be Absolutely. water resilient and, right. and you know right. still have it while not having too much of it right. so yeah. right so and but unfortunately you know with chennai and the humidity of chennai we are not able to use water for evaporative cooling correct so you know you have to think about that also right so you know increasing the humidity only increases the discomfort mm. so how do you how do you strike a balance with all this is is the major you know challenge that we are facing now and but sustainability is here and we have to reckon that it is something that we have to tackle logically efficiently and persistently so that's a wrap then for another episode of design divas and today we talked about water resilience and water resilience in our design as well as water as an aesthetic element in our design and how we've had experiences with water in general as part of an architectural project so please do like share and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and we are here to keep talking a little bit more and getting our ideas out there to the rest of the architecture Absolutely. and design community so thank you